Hey everyone, it's Mike from Orphals here and welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you could join me for this video. I'm going to talk about a trade that I took today in the mini DAO. Um, you know, a lot of people say, show me trade, show me a trade. And, you know, everybody trades differently, you know, and sort of, it's, it's, I sort of get the feeling that people say, show me the trades. You know, they want all these big winners. Really what I am, I'm more like a dink and dunk type of guy in and out. But this was a trade that I, I sort of want to take you through the thought process of how I kept managing the trade okay so um this was it was in the dow today with the ym okay so again you know today is the uh, 26th of september and you know we were trading on our lows coming you know when the cash session opened up we we're not on our lows but near our lows okay then um in the dow we had just made a new low at 905 now this is a 30 second chart right dow is moves a bit faster than um, e-minis. I, I, I prefer sort of a shorter term chart rather than a, a full one minute chart. But we had just hit this low, made a new low by two ticks, and then we bounced up, right? We got a lot of strong, um, aggressive buying coming in here, okay, off of this low, right? Let's just open it up. Um, you know, we traded a low, it's kind of a nondescript low, but off this low, right, what was going on? We had a strong selling coming in here, minus 132 in the delta, then minus seven, plus 38, plus 289. Thought, oh, man, I thought, honestly, I thought this market was going to start to rally off this low. I'm like, hey, you know what? It's nine in the morning. Maybe this is our low for the day because it's just sort of that, that sort of that weak low by a couple of ticks and then you start rallying up. Okay, even here, we got some strong aggressive buying. You got a stack buying imbalance. Um, point control in the middle of the bar. Okay, fine. Nothing special about that. But the delta was obviously getting stronger, right? It was coming down into the low. It's getting a little bit weaker. Seven. We made that new low. It's positive delta. Now it's 38. So it's positive seven, positive 38, positive 289. Right? That is a delta surge. Right? The delta is increasing to the positive side. And then you throw in, oh, yeah, hey, you know what? I've got stack buying imbalance coming in here. Got more buying imbalances up here. Looking for this market to go up, and it started to, right? It went from the high of this bar is what, 76, got all the way up to 87. And then everything changed in a sense, right? Ends up with this red candle down, value area up on the upper half of this bar, okay? And then the next bar, it's a doji candle, it doesn't trade back into that value area. And then the next bar, red candle, it's what we call an engulfing value. That's why it's darker red as opposed to the normal red. So that's that's a stronger bearish value area. So I got a bearish value area here. Got a bearish value area here. I've got a bearish prominent point of control coming in here as well. Okay. Then we start, you know, another red candle down. This time it's got positive delta of 12. Okay. What does that mean? Right? So you got negative delta, negative delta. So at the same time, while you know, I have a nice delta surge going up here with positive delta, positive delta surge, 7, 38, 289, went from 289 to 39 to minus 13. Okay, so what if you're looking for a bullish activity to come in, you're looking for this market to be trading higher, right, and delta to still be positive. But now it's turning, you know, it went from a delta surge positive to kind of a, a surge to the negative side in here. So it went from 289 to just 39 to minus 13 to minus 31, then you get 12 here. Okay, it's small, it's 12, but it's positive. So what's that telling me? It's a red candle with positive delta. It's telling me that there was probably some supply coming into the market because that supply is absorbing that aggressive buying that's taking place. And then it's just negative, 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 minus one, which is, you know, I don't read anything into that. If it's minus one, it could be zero, it could be minus five, but minus one is kind of neutral. Minus 53. I got short at 50, 34050. And I didn't try and finesse this level. I just hit uh, you know the button to the sell. Um now it was interesting because I know that I had the stacked buying imbalance here. Okay, so I know I have the stack, I got this big value area. Okay, and we're slowly chipping away, chipping away. But this was sort of my my stand here. Now here you got the point of control coming in at 58. You got the stacked buying imbalance here. You know, got to at least hold this buying imbalance, right? Because it's kind of a sweep that took place. It didn't. It started failing through. Okay, maybe we could make a run down to the low. Because initially, I, I was, you know, I trade Dow with a 20 tick ATM, right? 
20 tick stop, 20 tick take profit. Okay, but I got more out of this trade because after I got in, right, 50, it only pulled back up to 53, right? So basically no heat on this trade, right? Three ticks, one, two, three. Then I got the abandoned value area here, a gap in the values from here to here. And when you trade back into this value area, again, we come back up to 50, and then it starts dropping, right? And again, I have my take profit at 30. I back it off down to, um, I forgot what, where it was, I think down to 10. I got abandoned value area, abandoned value area, right? So I'm thinking, hey, you know, maybe I can get some more out of this trade. And at the same time, I'm moving my stop down, right? To Eventually, I broke it. I got it down to break even, not right away. Because again, you know, you don't want to move it. You know, people always say, oh, how fast should I move it? You know, they'll see the mo trades in the money, 10 ticks in the money. Okay, I'm taking my stop down from 70 down to break even. And then what happens? It trades back up to break even. Trades one contract would stop you out. Give it some time, not right away move it to break even. Okay, when you're in the money by a decent amount, then you could you know, start bringing it down. I started bringing it down to break even when we're trading around 25, right? And then, you know, we just kept dropping, right? And then I see nice consistent negative deltas. Okay, but I, I know I, here, I got this value area that's abandoned, a value area that's abandoned in here. So these are, you know, my, technically my resistance areas. Okay, and I just kept backing down, backing down. Eventually, you know, I, I thought I was going to, I thought it was going to cover it down in here at, uh, you know, at, at 400, but I just saw the strong selling, strong negative deltas coming in, the gaps in value that just kept me backing off, backing off, backing off. And eventually we hit this low down here at 53. I did have a take, I did have my take profit down to 50. I, I moved it down to 50. Um, and I just kept moving my stop down, right, on the double O or 34,000 rather. Um, you know, a little bit lower. We had this area in here with the abandoned value area. So you got basically one, two, three value areas, obviously overlapping. This is the first time that you really had three value areas overlapping in this whole move down. I mean, here you had two, here you had two, but, you know, here's two, but a lot of gaps in value. So, okay, maybe, you know, this elevator down is going to stop, okay? And it just kept going down. So I just, you know, at this point, I already had it down to 50. Got down to 53 and then started going sideways. Okay. And again, any, you know, people would say, well, here you got some nice positive deltas, 21, 50, 41. Yeah, but the red candle. So it's telling me that there's some supply coming into this market still. How do I know that? Okay. Well, one, I got the positive deltas, but just by looking at the footprint, how do I know there's supply? We're just right off our low of the day. And I'm seeing where's the heaviest volume appearing in this bar. We'll start with this bar, 63. It's on the offer side, 65, 55, 60, right? Strong volumes coming in on the offer. So I knew there was still the capacity to go lower. Then it starts going lower, okay? And I see, again, I thought this market could come down to 50. I see 141 in here at 108, but then we're not trading below it. We're trading on the other side. And at this point, then I had already pulled my stop down to 75, which is here. And we just started popping back up and then it stopped me out. Then you got that big um, burst coming in here at 922. If you remember on the E-minis, you also had a big order come through around that same time. Um, a big buyer swept through the market from, I think it was like 28 to 40, to up to 30 on the S&Ps. Um, where was it? Yeah, right here. Right, 28 up to 30. That it's right around that same time of that big order at the algo, also doing the same thing here. Okay, so really, what kept me into the trade longer, as opposed to just getting 20 ticks out of it, ending up you know getting 75 ticks out of it, is watching what's happening in the order flow. Right, trailing it down, watching these value areas, the gaps in the value. Right, the value, not, the market not really trading back into the previous value areas here, here. You know, this one it traded back into, okay, but then it left one here, it left one here, gap, gap. That's my sign, another gap. That's my sign to pull back, try and get a little bit more out of it. 
today it worked out. Okay, sometimes um, I try to get a little bit fancy and it doesn't necessarily work out the way that you like. Um, but you know, I was pleased with it. Eventually, you know, it did pull back up to you know, like what fifteen. I think we we did go lower. I mean, you know, we actually got all the way almost up to fifty by entry, and then you know, down to new lows. But by that time, I'm done. Um, you know, would have been nice if you put in that whole move down to here to 05, but you know, I would have been out at 50 anyway. But so anyway, that's it. And again, you know, you got to realize, you know, people always say post trades, post trades, you know, um, but it's, you know, again, you know, for me, trading Dow, I start with a 20 tick, take profit, 20 tick, stop, and then manage the trade. All right. You don't have to sit here and live and die by uh, 20 ticks, because if I just left it in at 20 ticks, short at 50, out at 30, I'm giving up another 55 ticks. But if you actively know how to manage the trade and you're not taking any heat on the trade, that's your sign to potentially move. Now, if it was sort of going sideways back and forth from here, and if I notice it was struggling to take out this low, you know, maybe it gets down to 40 and then starts trading back up to 50, that's not a good sign. But the fact that it was just sort of getting through these levels without much stopping it, that I could probably get more out of this trade. Okay, so and unfortunately, that does take some experience of, of going, of actually watching the market and actually trading it, that there's, there's no replacement for that, unfortunately. So anyway, guys, I, I hope that uh, you guys get something useful out of this video on potentially you know, managing your own trades, because at the end of the day, Really what it's about is managing risk, managing your own trades um, to try and get more out of it. But at the same time, you got to cut it, right? Where traders run into trouble is, you know, say you're short here at 50 and the market just pulls back down to 40. You still got your profit at 30 and it just starts ticking back up to, to 50 maybe, you know, comes back up here and you're starting to sweat it, gets up to 60 your stops up here at 70 and you think, well, I'm just going to back it up to 80. Then it starts trading 70, 75. Oh, you know what? I, was going to, I still think it's heavy. It's going to go down. Then you move it up to 90. Next thing you know, you're stopped out at 90, right? So you just, you know, instead of taking 20 ticks on it, you take an additional 20 tick stop on it. So control yourself, I guess, is the name of the game, um, which is not something a lot of traders are good at, right? It takes experience and willing to bite the bullet because nobody wants to lose basically right we all like to think that every trade is going to be a winner but there's times where trades just don't work out right so you got to understand where you want to get out before you get into a trade and but you can always adjust it right but sort of have in your mind you're going to get out of a trade if it's not working out if you're in a trade and it's working out you could always extend it further okay so anyway, guys, I'll end that video. And again, I can, hopefully you guys get something useful out of this video by seeing sort of the, the thought process that I went through today. So I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.